so we arrive at the last cards which came in with the latest expansion for Legends of Runeterra. Now every time I get to explaining the lore of these new sets, I always say it's gonna be a quick one, but I still make a 20 minute long video. But this time it is gonna be quick, because somehow LeBlanc revealed more lore in the Demacian cards than in her own cards. And there might be a reason why. The whole point of LeBlanc is that no one really knows anything about her. She is, by far, the most mysterious character in League of Legends. And because of a couple of tweets, we know that LeBlanc is not one of the three members of the Triforix, even though one of the other cards shows LeBlanc as Guile. And we know that there will be a point in the future at which the true face of LeBlanc will be revealed, and we will learn what is going on. So till that happens, all we know is that together with Vladimir, she founded the Cabal organization underneath Noxus known as the Black Rose. And that she is really good at manipulating people. But manipulating might not even be the right term. It's more like possessing people. Because for example in the Garen novel, she did essentially take over the body of one of Garen's relatives. And through their eyes they saw what was happening in Demacia, and using that person as a puppet, she was manipulating the people around them. And that's because LeBlanc is always playing 8D chess. We know that Swain is constantly trying to outsmart her. But if he didn't have his demon, Raum, on his side, he would be royally screwed. But all of that will be explained at some point in the future. So now, at least, let's have a look at all the tiny easter eggs and hints shown in LeBlanc's cards. LeBlanc herself has a really cool easter egg. Here we can see her essentially governing the Black Rose. These are most likely the nobles who decided to join the cult. But based on their appearance, there is something interesting happening. On the left side, we can see a person wearing a mask. We don't have enough evidence to determine who this person is. It might be just a spy wearing a mask. But what if this is the silver half mask of a mage seeker? We know that LeBlanc is manipulating people all over Runeterra, from all the regions. And there are some interesting theories that LeBlanc might be manipulating the mage seekers themselves. So if that turns out to be the truth, this person being a mage seeker would be really interesting because that would prove LeBlanc's influence on Demacia. Then on the other side you have the darker skin person, who looks like someone who would come from Shurima, and then there is the aristocrat looking person who reminds me of Piltovens. What I'm trying to say is that these people might be from all over Runeterra. Then again, remember that Noxus is just recruiting everyone. Noxus doesn't really care where you're from. As long as you're helping the nation, you're welcome. Anyway, the really cool easter egg here comes from the description and from the leveled up form. Now, now, no need to squabble among ourselves. For the moment we will refrain from any rash action. Let us reconvene once we have heard from our emissary. After all, we all want the same thing. First of all, Leblanc mentions that they are going to wait for what their emissary has to say. Of course, the emissary is most likely one of the possessed people, which Leblanc has in one of the other regions. But then when she mentions that they all want the same thing, the reflection in the table shows not her mirror images, but that the other people are being manipulated by LeBlanc. You can see it is exactly the same scene, because on the table you can see the exact same sigil of the Black Rose, and if you have a look to LeBlanc's right, you can see the person holding a red feather, and that person is shown as an image of LeBlanc in the reflection. But interestingly, none of the other images have the crown which the original LeBlanc has. I wonder if this means that this power to manipulate people or mind control them is caused by the artifact which LeBlanc has on her forehead. Unfortunately, we really don't know what's the deal with that crown, but I wouldn't be surprised if it became important later on. Last really cool detail to notice here, the letter on the left is using the typical Noxian writing. This same script is used by Swain, it was seen in the Demonic Compendium, and you can even notice it when Tom Kench levels up, because he's making a deal with a Noxian. I later went through LeBlanc's quotes and I noticed that she has two really interesting interactions with other champions. When she's talking to Vladimir, she points out that she is waiting for him to die. I'd never keep my guests waiting. But I've been waiting centuries for you to die. Again, remember that she and Vladimir basically founded the Black Rose. So I wonder if LeBlanc teamed up with him because one day she was hoping to get his power. And she just didn't expect that Vladimir would live forever. The other interesting interaction is with Lysandra, and the quotes of both champions hit at something totally different. I feel I know you. 
Have we met? We have much in common, you and I. Lissandra feeling like she had already met LeBlanc before, maybe hinting at the fact that LeBlanc infiltrated even the Frostguard Citadel. If not, because Lissandra is all about watching the dreams of the people of Freljord. Since LeBlanc is unconsciously whispering to people, maybe Lissandra has seen LeBlanc in one of the dreams. On the other side, LeBlanc mentioning that they have something in common is relating to the fact that they are both trying to stop some kind of doom arriving on Runeterra. Lissandra is trying to stop the Watchers, and LeBlanc is trying to stop some kind of evil locked underneath Noxus. It was never directly confirmed what that evil is, but there is a really high chance that she is the only one who is trying to stop Mordekaiser from coming back. He is the evil linked to the core of Noxus. LeBlanc then also has the Sigil of Malice, which is one of her spells. The only thing I can mention here is that it is cool that Riot stuck to this design. The design of this spell comes from the original release of LeBlanc, and they just hadn't changed it since. So instead of redesigning it, it's cool that Riot just gave it a background which looks like a black rose. This means that the Sigil of Malice is just supposed to represent the petals of a rose. But that's really just a detail. And unfortunately, even the description doesn't reveal anything. Once the battle is won, one must not hesitate, but press on, pursue and annihilate their foe. But LeBlanc also has her mirror image, with a description that also doesn't reveal anything. Though it is interesting to see that in the mirror image, which funnily enough is shown in a mirror, I guess it's a pun here, but in that image she looks far more demonic. I wonder if this means that LeBlanc will eventually be connected to some kind of a demon. I wonder if that is going to be the massive reveal, though I hope that's not going to be the case. Swain being connected to a demon is really cool. LeBlanc being a demon herself might stretch it too far. Either way, even in her mirror image, you can see that she is still wearing the crown. So when she decides to duplicate herself, you won't be able to tell the original from the copy based on the crown. But then we get to the other cards. First there is the Crimson Bloodletter. They are rarely kept as pets, you know. Just one little scratch from those claws of theirs can open up a vein. But I don't mind. The quote of Clara, the Crimson Disciple. Here I have to say that Noxus just has the coolest animals. They have basilisks, they have the drake hounds, and now they even have the bloodletters. Others have horses and goats. Though Demacia has a fair share of animals too. But still, Noxians got it way better. Two interesting details here. First of all, I love the shirt. It's just flowers that look like splattered blood. A really cool design for the Crimson Circle. Though I wonder if these flowers represent the Night Bloom which is a flower that Vladimir possesses, because he got it off of the Blessed Isles. The other interesting detail here is that the belly of the blood letter is glowing. I wonder if that means that it is like a mosquito, and that's where it stores blood. Anyway, then there is the Black Rose Spy. Here the spy is most likely the standing person, though it can also be the one on the throne. Notice that that person also has a similar crown to the one that LeBlanc has. At the very least it has a very similar gem. And I wonder if that's because LeBlanc gave that crown to them. Because if you go back to the leveled up version of LeBlanc, you may notice that she has another one of those gems on her belt. I wonder if that's kind of a tool which she gives to her followers, and by doing that she really ensures that she can mind control them. But that might be just me stretching it too far. What I'm trying to say is that the gem might be pointing out that she is under LeBlanc's influence. And in fact, she is the spy. Anyway, if we have a look around, we are definitely in some kind of a Black Rose hideout. Because not only is there a very simplified icon of the Black Rose on the throne, but also there is the same sigil which we have seen on the table, in the window, at the back. So despite all of this looking like it is somewhere in Ionia for example, it might still be in Noxus. Though remember that the Black Rose might have its hideouts all over Runeterra. So this might be happening in a different region. But unfortunately, that's all we really know about this. The description says, a secret is only worth the cost of keeping it. Later I notice that the Black Rose Spy has an interaction with LeBlanc. What secrets do you bring me? Whispers of a rose blooming in the desert. Here, the rose in the desert is most likely Samira from Shurima. And of course, if you have read Samira's story, you know that Samira is being hired by LeBlanc even though she doesn't know it herself. 
And indirectly, this may confirm that the setting of this art might actually be in Shurima. And then there is the spell Mimic. Imitation is flattery, and flattery can be quite deadly. The only thing I can really mention here is that this sigil is curiously shaped like a moon, especially the one which the Lunari use for their altars. And behind it, you can almost see stars as if all of this was connected to some celestial power. I wonder if this is teasing something. But regardless, I don't think we should overlook the fact that this does really look like a moon. Maybe that's what the imitation is all about. Just maybe LeBlanc is imitating some kind of a celestial power. But then there is the thorn of the rose. Hey Lana, my dearest friend and colleague, have you seen Lord Duin about... Ah, what a shame. I was very much looking forward to catching up. I do hope he paced himself tonight. I would hate for anything to happen to that old boy. The words of Lady Overeye, Black Rose Spy. Now looking at the roses on the walls, once again this is some kind of a Black Rose party. But more importantly, if you have a look at the person who's on the floor, either dead or the person has his face in blood because he drank too much blood. You know, he might be a person of the Crimson Circle. In fact, in the censored version, he is just unconscious on the floor. Either way, if you have a look at his ring, it is the exact same gem which we have seen before. This may be yet another proof that these gems are somehow linked to LeBlanc manipulating people. Because I don't think they are symbols of these people just being members of the Black Rose. That's what the Black Rose sigils are for. They wouldn't use these red gems. Anyway, the other important thing to point out here is that, yes, this seems to be a female minotaur. Ah, uh, which, you know, this is kinda a fantasy trope that everyone hates. When you have a fantasy race and you have a really muscular race, why are the female always really skinny and just different from the males? And I'm not really advocating for anything here, I just wonder, biologically, when you have this massive person, you know, how does the reproduction even work? You have to draw the line somewhere. And this is just strange. Though, hopefully, maybe this is not a female minotaur. Maybe it is just some kind of a Vastaya. And it just happens to look like a minotaur. If that's the case, that saves everything. Otherwise, this is weird. Maybe she is just from some really skinny clan of minotaurs. Then there is bloody business. The greatest threats are the ones that go unseen, which doesn't reveal much. I just want to show you that yes, this person has the sigil of the Black Rose on him. He doesn't have a gem. This is how you can tell that a person is a member of the Black Rose. And of course they have the Black Rose sigil behind them. Either way, it seems like someone is going to get beat up. And funnily enough, we know the main character is not going to do the beating, because they have white gloves while the goons behind him have dark gloves. It's a really cool subtle design to tell you who's going to do the dirty job. And then there is a shrieking spinner. Go on, my sweet, let the others hear your call. You know how it excites them. You know it pleases me. The quote of Elise. Here, I wonder if this person is actually still the same aristocrat which we have seen before. Because here they have a black suit with the black rose on it. I don't think they wore this before. So either this is happening before the entire storyline he had with Elise, or eventually he didn't die, but he was recruited into the Black Rose. Either way, in this description, Elise might be talking to both the prey, and she wants them to scream, or to the shrieking spinner, a spider that is shrieking. Also, what is happening with their body, I have no idea. But since they are a spinner, they are most likely supposed to be making the webs. And then there are the whispered words. Before the news, the rumors. Before the rumors, the play. Before the play, the plot. And here we can see the thorn of the rose, which was the minotaur from before, delivering a message. Unfortunately, I can't tell if we have seen the seal on this message before. The one which the spy had had a circular seal. So this might be some kind of a rune instead. And again, we unfortunately have no idea what this is about. Though, if you have a look at the bottom left, you can see that they made a mistake. It's not really important, but hey, it's in the game, you can check it out. Lastly, there is the unrelated strength in numbers. Though the soldiers of Noxus rarely leave survivors, 
the marauders leave even fewer. I feel like this kinda isn't true, because Noxus is actually recruiting whoever wants to join Noxus. They are not picky. As long as you obey orders, you can join them and they won't kill you. In fact, we know the motto of the Noxian army. It is kill them until they are family. I'm not even kidding, that is what they say. Which kinda does point at the fact that they are killing people. And only then they are asking if they would join. But you know, they still leave some people be. That's kinda the point of Noxus. They want to be friends, but not before they kill someone. But that is it for LeBlanc's cards. As I mentioned, finally a somewhat of a quicker one. Though we are still stretching longer than I expected. So now we are going back to all the regular stories again. Though right now it seems like Riot is on a break. We are still expecting Isolde to arrive at any moment now. At least on PBE. Though the first wave of the Groove skins arrived, none of them are from the ones we have seen in the teasers. So a second wave will still likely come. And in that second wave, we are expecting Isolde. So until then, expect more videos talking about interesting topics and top 10s. We haven't done those in a while, maybe it's time for a comeback.